never had to be a character and not everybody has the opportunity to just be themselves i can be happy sunshine lollipops and rainbows everything that's one or i can be mad as fuck <laughs> like that right it's not hard for me i treat wrestling like it's real so therefore, Cutthroat Cody Hancock can exist whether he's doing comedy wrestling, deathmatch wrestling, hardcore wrestling, store right to the heart too. Right, but I simply exist in wrestling as who I am, and it's a really cool feeling to just be able to be myself. Who are your influences in professional wrestling? That's a that's a multi layered question because when I first uh, entertained the idea of stepping into professional wrestling, I was overweight. And I kind of looked at people that were in ECW, like Sandman and Mikey Whipwreck, and obviously Mick Foley. But once I realized that there was a price to pay um, when it came to taking crazy bumps to mask the fact that I technically wasn't sound, I had to get new heroes. So I ended up going to watch guys like Dean Malenko and Eddie Guerrero and Dynamite Kid and then I moved on to Japanese wrestling. Once I found Japanese wrestling, I began to be inspired by people like Masawa, and Kabashi, Kawada, and Tyler, the, the four pillars of all Japan, um, Kijimuto, um, Great Muda. Uh, it's hard to answer the question because wrestling as a whole has kind of inspired me and I think people now, uh, guys like Chris Hero, the idea is to make a living in this industry, right? And he's somebody that not only made it in this industry without a contract, but even made it with a contract. So uh, the list is changing every day. Uh, just it's wrestling in general that inspires me. I'm not always right. I, I had to let go of being right a really long time ago. I used to be very opinionated. I'm like, no, wrestling has to be like this. This is the way that wrestling needs to be. No, because uh, you're gonna say, no, wrestling needs to follow this strict set of rules, right? And it needs to follow this blueprint. And then you do that in your area and it works, but then the second that you step out of the state, you try doing what you feel is right in front of a crowd that does not respond to that. And you'll quickly discover that there's a lot of different ways to get the point across when it comes to professional wrestling. You gotta learn how to do a little bit of lucha. You gotta learn how to do a little bit of technical chain wrestling. You gotta learn how to do showmanship. You gotta, you gotta learn it all because then you're going to be a Swiss Army knife. I can't just be right about everything, and I want to have dialogue with people. I want to be challenged, right? Because I don't want to be right. I just want to be able to let people know that there could be a different way to do things. Uh, my name is AJ Aben, uh, born and raised in Las Vegas, I'm 21, and I'm a student at Future Stars of Wrestling. I've been training since October, so six months now. Main coach. 
Cody, Cody Hancock has been kind of my only coach after the first month I was here. I kind of fell off and I was only really going to his classes, so. I've never met someone who is so intense, but cares so much. That man, I hear him scream at least once, almost every class, at least once, but it's all love. I've never met someone that cares so much about this business as he does. Uh, would you like to talk about what happened last training session that we were here? Yeah, um, so if I remember, that was... Get back on the, the same page, guys. Make guys this shit work. Yeah. That was my first real test to um, the structures of how much works. Um, if I remember correctly, that was... Um, that was the universal spot one. Oh, I remember that was the match I messed my hand up in. <laughs> The structuring of the universal spot into, uh, I think he had us do double heat, and then he had us uh, do double comebacks, yeah, and then a finish. Um, and when we timed it, it was about 10 minutes, which is um, an actual match on like our shows here. They're about 8 to 10 minutes. So it was a really great eye-opener to see all the different parts of a match, being able to work through like the beginning and the shine being a baby face and a heel uh, throughout the heat. Um, and then being able to not only give, but take the comeback and then get to the finish. Uh, I genuinely think that was my first real match that I'd ever worked. Um, and I actually, Cody gave me a whole bunch of really good moves from that match. And he typically does with every, with every training session we come out of. I have a new addition to my move set. Um, I remember correctly that night. After the uh, shines, when we were going into heat was when I started getting blown. And um, towards the end of the second heat, I was, I was gagging. And I remember I took that neck breaker. And the second I took the neck breaker, I was just bullet, bullet. And in the XL, Cody had me hop out. I ran into the bathroom. Go break the count, break the count, break the count. Yes, you Yes, you can. Tell me fucking Yes, you fucking can. Go And actually, I told him, no, I couldn't. He was like, yes, you can, yes, you can. He started screaming at me and just getting really amped up. And he slapped me. And the slap is exactly what I needed to go back out there and finish that match. And um, that's just kind of what he is when he teaches. He's very intense, but I genuinely think if that moment didn't happen, I would not finish a match. fucking lung, okay? I did not take that from anybody. You feel what I'm saying? First and foremost, push fucking through or find a way to at least get home. You got what I'm saying? Find a way to get home, okay? Listen, Cody knows exactly what he is talking about, and if, if he points something out, he's wrong. And the other thing with Cody is if he's taking his time to nitpick you, don't take it personally because that means he really does care about you and he's taking time and you 
and like Cody said, this isn't like for you to shit on yourself. Um, this is literally just an evaluation to see where we're at, to see how close we are to being on the car. So just view it as that. This is where I am. And this is what I need to work. That's, that's it's awesome. okay to fuck up. You feel what I'm saying? You are all gonna be in for a fucking ride. Everyone understands the concept of what we just did. Raise your hands if you don't. Cool? Because if you look like a wrestler, people treat you like a wrestler. Uh, I mean, it's, it's really hard because I wasn't ready to fully embrace everything it took to be a professional wrestler when I first got into wrestling because I had a massive lung surgery when I was 18 years old. I was told that I should not be doing anything physically and I listened to these people. They may have not known that I really, really wanted to do something. Indentation there. Thankfully, it's not broken. Okay. It's a wrap. It's a wrap.